Hello and welcome to the Underhive. Today I want to speak to you about the Leagues of Votan. Now, the Leagues of Votan are considered widely by the 40k community, though not everyone will agree, that they are coming out at a higher than typical power level. And as far as I'm concerned, there is only one reason that Games Workshop would do that, and that is... Money! I don't think I could have put that any better myself. To me, this looks like a, a boardroom decision. They know these are new models outside of the small subset of the community that are affiliated with GW and will get models like that for free, given to them to uh, promote them and show off the, the models and use them in battle reports. Outside of those, those small subsets of the community, the rest of us would have to buy these models to get them. And as they are a brand new um, line of models, there is no secondhand marketplace for them. You're going to be buying these from GW directly. So they have every incentive for these to be one of, if not the most powerful faction, because there are players out there that just play for the fun of it. And I feel I count myself among that, despite Death Guard being fairly strong. Um, but... Uh, there are also a, a subset of players that play to win. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you enjoy about the game, being the best and winning, that's fine. And ultimately, if you're led down the path of buying the strongest current faction in order to continue winning, again, I don't hold that against you. But Games Workshop fabricating a scenario where their newest line of models is also one of, if not the most potent faction at the moment isn't particularly consumer friendly because with that being the case if they do come out too strong they will then likely need to nerf them and many of the people that agree they are higher than average power level also agree that there should be some form of nerf and that is bad for consumers in that right now the two models that i think are the biggest um overpowered units would be Uthar and the Land Fortresses with Railgun. So if you go out of your way to buy those models and you buy three Land Fortresses because you can, uh, and then all of a sudden they increase the points cost, you can no longer fit three in the list, it's not a very good way to treat your customers in terms of not only the money they'll spend, yes, you might be able to sell that model on and make your money back, but you probably invested a lot of time and effort into painting it up and getting it battle ready for play. So... Doing that and then being forced to no longer use one of those models because it becomes too expensive or no longer as viable in terms of the power output isn't a great place to be. And whilst I've got no insight into whether or not Games Workshop will actually nerf it or whether they already intend to do so, it does feel like the sort of thing that warrants a nerf looking at what they've done previously in 9th edition. So why do I feel that way? So as it stands, Uthar is 140 points and the uh, land fortresses are 230 points. Running three land fortresses and Uthar among some other characters is not really going to hamstring your list. And it also offers a fantastic combination in terms of dealing with really any opponent, but particularly dealing with units that are uh, above 18 wounds and units that are otherwise very durable and difficult to deal with for armies that are not Leagues of Votan. Uthar is a Great Athorian League named character. So if you take an Uthar, you're taking the Great Athorian League, and he lines up with them with that league in such a powerful way. As a Carl unit, so the captains, if you like, of the uh, of the Votan, they can give out a judgment token in the command phase. You can pay one CP to make that two command token, uh, two judgment tokens. And as the Great Athorian League, you count the judgment tokens as being one more than they actually are. So you can pay one CP to give three judgment tokens out in a single move. Um, and given that the Leagues of Otan have some really great ways of generating CP, as well as some above average strength stratagems, they're really going to lean into generating that CP and using those stratagems, and I feel that this will be one you will see very, very frequently. Uh, for one CP, to make it an immediate three judgment tokens is massive. Now, that's because of what judgment tokens do. When a unit has three judgment tokens on it, any hit roll of a four plus automatically wounds, and that wound roll becomes a six. Now, that six on the wound roll isn't always relevant, but it is going to be good to have. That's going to be a good weight of dice 
from the rest of the guns on that land fortress, not even including the railgun. But the railgun itself, when it procs on a judgment token hit roll, it will carry over excess damage. Now, I think that the profile and the rules surrounding the Land Fortress are bad for the game in terms of 18 wound plus models, because it's going to be very, very difficult to keep them out of visual line of sight. And that means they will very likely receive three judgment tokens early in the game and subsequently be shot to death by railguns. But it's also bad in context of, say, a unit of Death Shroud, an otherwise very difficult model or set of models to remove for a typical opponent. But with the Railgun dealing 2d3 plus 6 damage, when it wounds on a 6, that means that it can carry over that damage and it ignores invulns. So when we're bringing a squad of Death Shroud or even just Terminators, part of what we're paying for in that model is the general durability of the model, but also the invuln we'd get. And in the Death Guard specifically, that four up, uh, sorry, that invuln being a four up is the reason why the Death Shroud are more expensive than a typical Terminator, whilst they're not necessarily any better at dealing with any one particular threat, whether shooting or melee, compared to, say, Chaos Terminators. So the fact that this can wipe out three Death Shroud in a single hit if you fail um, the saving throw, which would just be a five up given there's no invuln, is pretty horrendous in my opinion. But as I mentioned, I think the, the real issue to the game as a whole is the threat they pose to 18 plus wound characters, things like the Greater Demons, the Primarchs, and the Knights. And that's because those armies are already paying a premium for those big models. They're already losing Obscuring. To lose their Invuln and it be able to be auto-wounding them just makes it so, so likely that they take massive amounts of damage. And the fact that the model that this Railgun is on isn't even expensive means you will almost certainly see three of them in a wide variety of lists. But without a doubt, you will see two. So why is it so potent? Well, we've got 36 inch range on that railgun, which means they're almost certainly going to be able to shoot. They average 10 damage. So if you don't have a phase limit, which many of these 18 plus wound characters don't, uh, or models don't, um, then again, racking three of these railguns up means you could average 10 uh, damage each and rack up 30 damage against that model if you do well enough on those hit rolls. The fact that it will probably have a few judgment tokens on it at this point means that you've got access to that auto wounding on probably a four up, if not a five up. And it's got big AP to boot. So the fact that it ignores invulns with that four AP means fair enough against armor of contempt factions, it's down to minus three. But that means it puts Mortarian on a six up save. And that is just ridiculous. Something would need to be done about Mortarian's data sheet. Otherwise, with these models out, there is just literally no reason to take Mortarian because you will come up against Votan and they will delete 450 points pretty much first turn or second turn every game that you run Mortarian. You've got the damage carryover if needed. So if you're not playing into a list that has those big 18 um, wound models, you can carry over the damage into a squad like, say, Terminators. Yes, Chaos Terminators with the Black Rune are very strong right now, particularly with the Mark of Zinch to ignore that first damage. But all you need to do is shoot a squad of infantry into them, get one wound on them to, to mitigate the Mark of Zinch, and then pile your railguns in that will wipe out potentially three Terminator models per hit on the railgun, which again is just a bit obscene. There's also the ability from Uthar for a single roll, hit or wound, to be changed to a six after rolling. Now, it's quite hard to get all three land fortresses in range so that you can use that on whichever one misses. But even so, you've got the ability to re-roll a hit or wound for free as part of the Great Athurian League. So the one that's next to Uthar, maybe you can get one or two within range for Uthar's ability. You roll your hit roll, you fail it. You re-roll your hit roll, 
you fail it. You don't get your four up to auto wound. So instead, you convert that hit to a six. So even if there was only one judgment token, you're now auto wounding and you're getting your damage carryover or you're putting the likes of Mortarion on a four up, uh, sorry, on a six up save. And he's very likely going to be taking the majority of that damage, only having his feel no pain to actually prevent it. Other larger models might not have that feel no pain and just eat the damage wholesale. On top of that, um, they've got the uh, transport capacity to bring something out to protect them. So you can have your Chthonian Berserks in there, get them out, and you're no longer at threat of being tied up by enemy infantry models. You would still be able to shoot the railgun into them, though. So even if you do tag a land fortress with your Death Shroud, they're still wanting to hit on four ups anyway. They don't really care about the minus one. They're looking for that 50-50 chance with the judgment tokens to auto wound you. Now that unit might not be a unit with a judgment token on it at this point. You might have escaped that. But even so, they've got that built in reroll. They're going to hit a six some of the time to hit. And that then is going to be uh, sufficient always to, to get to the wound roll. And as a result, they're going to be wounding you a lot of the time because it's strength 14. It's AP minus four. As we've said, it puts everything on a terrible save because they ignore invulns. And there's just nothing to not like about it. On top of that, if you did manage to tag it and you've not been shot at point blank range with the railgun, you can't reroll wound rolls against them. So that makes Death Guard utterly shabby. And they get Armor of Contempt. So when Armor of Contempt first came out, it felt like a great buff to Space Marines because they were otherwise pretty lacking. But Sisters got it as well. And Sisters having access to great secondaries has shot them up to the top tier of competitive play. Now we're seeing Armor of Contempt once again go on a faction that already has the means to shoot you off the board as early as turn one, let alone not have we re uh, wounds re-rolled against them. So things like, for example, Arch Contaminator and Plague Weapons for, for Death Guard, along with Lightning Claws for other factions, are a key way for that faction to actually generate some damage into an uphill engagement. But you're not going to be able to do that against these land fortresses. So they're going to be terribly difficult to remove. So looking at this versus Morty. So first turn, they can see Morty because you've not been able to completely hide him. He's got three judgment tokens on him. They've got those three railgun shots. Let's assume the one next to Uthar flubs it. But he turns that to a six and auto wounds. You've got a six up save. And if you fail that, on average, you're taking 10 damage. The next two have got 50-50s with a free reroll to then do the exact same thing. Even if they hit on a three, they're still going to be wounded on threes with it being strength 14. So even if they don't get to use their judgment tokens, they're still more likely they're not going to push that damage through. On average, the result of a D3 is going to be a two. So that's 10 damage a piece. Even with your five up feel no pain, you're still in the position where Morty could well die to that barrage. If we look at something, and that six up save is only because Morty has armor of contempt. If we look at Chaos Knights, for example, they're on a three up with no armor of contempt. If you're telling me that these bare chested barbarian space dwarf miners have got armor of contempt when we can literally see their nips, how does a Chaos Knight with layers of ablative armor that's otherwise made of metal besides the guys piloting it, how does that not have armor of contempt? But they don't. It is what it is. So they don't have armor of contempt. They've got a three up save base on the majority of them. So they don't get a save. So three railguns probably into a knight that doesn't have a feel no pain if you've got a choice between one that doesn't and one that does they obliterate it in a single turn so my point being here for 230 points if you're not planning to run three land fortresses i don't know why you're playing leagues of otan you're probably running two of them at the bare minimum and that probably is still enough to get the job done but three is just utter overkill 
As far as I'm concerned, something really needs to be done about it, and I actually believe they intend to, and that it's just bad business practice, but I could be wrong. Either way around, uh, the idea would be that we all vote with our wallet and don't buy those models until they're releasing them in a state that is actually good for the game, but we all know that that isn't going to happen. When you get a bunch of people together in a room that all have the same competitive idea, there is at least a small subset of them that don't give a shit about the rest of you, they just want to win. And because that is going to be the case, I don't hold it against those people, but because that is going to be the case... You might as well join them because you're probably not going to be three land fortresses with railguns as part of the Great Athurian League supported by Uthar. Well, it's a sad state that that's, uh, that's where we're going to be. I was really looking forward to this release, but uh, even though I don't particularly want to play Leagues of OTAN, it's really killed my motivation to carry on with my Death Guard and expand my army even further, because nothing I can add to the list, aside from more heavy firepower, is going to make the Death Guard any better at dealing with the Leagues of OTAN, and all of a sudden, we're we would have to change our army from infantry-based, foot slogging, as the Death Guard are, perhaps with a bit of artillery, to being a ton of Blight Haulers and Plague Burst Crawlers to look to take out those land fortresses early, and then all of a sudden you've not got enough obsec infantry to get on with what you intended to do as the Death Guard, which is control the board, hold the objectives, and win on the primary. So, uh, as I say, whilst I agree, there is a little bit of butt hurt here from being a Death Guard player. I just don't think it's good for any faction to have rules like this printed. I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to know your opinion on them as well. Maybe you're super hyped for them and you don't see them as overpowered. I'm more than happy to hear that opinion and discuss it as well. Um, if there's any reason that you might feel that way, I would love to hear those reasons because I'm willing to hold my hands up and say I'm wrong. If they turn out not to be overpowered, then I will be the first to say that I was wrong about it. But until we actually see that be the case, and I don't think we will, I am of the opinion that they should not have been printed in this way. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, you know how YouTube works. If you wouldn't mind leaving a like, leaving a comment, or subscribing to the channel, you know that it helps me out, but it really would mean a lot to me if you take the time to do that. So thank you so much if you have. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time in the Underhive.